So I'd like to introduce... Are, are you ready, Dave? Or? Uh, okay. You can introduce me if you like. Okay, so I'd like to introduce um, um, Dave Tarrant from the University of Southampton. Um, Dave um, worked on an entry for open repositories this year, which was in Austin, Texas. And um, it by far got the greatest audience reaction. It was just, it was amazing. I mean, a few people came to Open Repositories. The, the reaction to Dave's presentation was, was, so I don't want to like build you up too much, Dave. <laughs> but, um, so I'll knock it down in a yeah, minute. Yeah, okay. Um, but uh, what, um, I mean, it's kind of on the title, but it, it's about, um, the, the, the theme for Open Repositories in, in Texas was show us the future of repositories. So, um, David, um, okay, you need that? Yeah. Okay. Um, David gave his take on that theme, and over to David now. Yeah. Excellent. Right, so um, in the last half an hour, I, I got this all working this morning. In the last half an hour, I've totally switched laptops so that I can give, hopefully, an even better demonstration. So this is running Richard Jones's laptop, not mine. Um, so let's hope it works. So we've got some objects on our system. We've got some drop boxes or repositories. You can have data, you can have images, you can have whatever you like. And we want to put stuff in them. So let's put stuff in them. Right, let's take this object. Come on. No, don't open it. <laughs> this is the trouble with changing laptop. It's going to open it. I'll go and get rid of that. Hopefully, he says. Excuse me a second. Sorry? Am I what, sorry? Yes, I am. Should be on. Hello. <laughs> there we go. Let's try that again. I'll try this once more on Richard's because I haven't tested it on Richard at all. I know it works on mine. Pick up. No, don't open it. <laughs> ah, so it doesn't work on Richard's. Oh, no. That's the, that's the curse of the demo. Yeah. Just try it again once more. And then I'll switch over. That is always the curse. Right. I might know why it's not working. I do know why it's not working. <laughs> Live, cult, live coding. Uh, uh, this one. Apologies well, for this. While she's doing that, those of you who were at Dev8 Dev Dev earlier will remember David and Ben O'Steen were playing with a Microsoft Connect to make it run an AR drone. And this is basically using very similar technology. Uh, we've hung, hung something around mathematics as well because. It's something the robot people might be interested in. Hard coded paths. <laughs> using hand movements to work in 3D to control computer systems. Do you know what, uh, does everybody know what an R drone is? I mean, look at quadcopter things that focus around the equation. So he's going to do this. Um, so, so, yeah, we were, so there was quite a few of us actually waving our arms around trying to embarrass ourselves making this thing focus around. Right, hopefully, I've coded that rightly now. Right. Hopefully, this will be the same sort of thing, but welcome to you. Give me the mouse. Right, come on. Pick it up. Yes. yes. Drop it. Right. Pick it up. Drop it. Repository. Drop it in. Pick it up. Uh, I don't want that one. Put that back. Here we go. Uh, what should we have? Let's have this. Uh, let's have this one. Let's have the other one. Pick it up. Drop it. Right, three repositories, but you can see what's happened on the left there. We've got links to the item, we've got instant feedback. When it's deposited successfully, you get a view. So let's go and have a look, <laughs> shall we? So let's have a look at this top one first, if I can get there. Come on. There it is. Open that up. Boom. Docx in, all metadata extracted. One record in the repository complete, one drag and drop. Okay, so we can also have a look at this. Scroll it down, don't do that. <laughs> That's all right, I've got it. Click it back, it just went into hyper-scroll mode. <laughs> so I have got scrolling working with two hands. 
right? <laughs> okay, so it's in the repository. That is that record. Let's have a look at another one, shall we? Let's go to repository two. I think you get a job with the jobs. Repository two. Richard, can you log it in? It's your one. Don't fall over the cable. Oh, really? There we go. So Rich is being a bit quicker than me, but there we go. We submitted one image. Notice the first one was an ePrints repository. The second one is a DSpace repository. Okay, so that is going into both, just to be fair here. I'm not implementing any of this. This is SWORD 2. All the underlying technology is SWORD 2. The simple thing that you can see on top is simply a Dropbox kind of library. Okay, so we can... So if I get rid of that window, what we can also do is uh, we can take this image here. Come on, pick it up. Grab it, thank you. Put it into there. Right? And of course, we're now creating our object with multiple things in it. So hopefully, not yet, because it's still uploading or doing something, because notice I left the first one a while. There we go. Right, so now we've got our image plus, we've got our document that defined all of the metadata, uh, which has apparently disappeared. Um, and then we've got uh, the second image, and we can have a look at this image like that. And I believe it's a load of junk. Yes, it is. Thanks for that, Ian. Um, <laughs> so there we go. Depositing into a repository using no mouse whatsoever and via Sword 2 using a Connect. <laughs> Switch laptop, and then I'll do one other demonstration. All right, then. If I can get it up, come on, laptop, let me come. I've got one more demonstration, which is less cool, but... Oh, look, I'm a victim of software counterfeiting. Anyway, one copy of Windows running on a Mac. Sorry, Mac. <laughs> Microsoft Word. So also within the, so within the deposit MO project, we were doing a lot with SWORD 2, and there are also various extensions in there that do the metadata extraction. Notice the image I put in DSpace also had all of its metadata extracted. Authors, title, all of the EXIF data was extracted from the image. Okay, so this is what happens when you don't activate your products. Um, but so, so all of that was extracted, so that's part of the deposit MO tools, is to develop things that try and extract metadata. Because during our user testing that we've done now as part of the deposit MO project, we found that the more you can automatically fill in, this is kind of obvious in a way, but we did the user testing to kind of prove it and to see what happened. The more metadata you can fill in, even if it's not 100% accurate, the more the, the, the depositor of that item will care to correct it and fill in the rest of the metadata. Right? So we did a series of user testing with different people from archaeology, chemistry, various different science fields, and whoever we could grab around Southampton, basically. Um, and um, one of the tests, it was an hour long, so you got used to the two technologies, being able to you know, drag and drop things, create records, and this technology, which I'm just about to show you, and um, within an hour, somebody actually gave us 18, I think it was 18, 17 or 18 fully marked up records complete with everything, even the optional metadata they decided to fill in. And we didn't tell them to do anything. We gave them three items to get used to the tools. And then they bought their own data. And with it extracting the metadata, they were very keen to just keep going. So it took an hour, hour to do 18, and they found it very positive and a good experience. So this is the other tool, which is obviously must look familiar to people. So let's go and open this same document again, which is the one I deposited using drag and drop, hopefully. Come on, Word. There we go. So same tool. Um, here we've got the markup on. So we've got the author tools installed so that you can mark up things like the title, the abstract. You can add, add your authors. This is all Microsoft standard stuff. You can download this, and it all works to do your references, keywords, everything. Right. The one thing that we've built in Deposit MO is we've built the toolbar. This isn't, it isn't perfect in terms of how it looks, but it is um, in terms of the functionality, in that what we can do is if I specify the sort endpoint here, uh, 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 and what we can do is we can submit this to the repository, connects to the repository, and we've deposited it. Um, Obviously, what I'm going to go and do is go to the repository, because that should be a clickable link, but we'll, we'll do that in time. And I'll just show you the record, 
which obviously there'll be two, because one I just dragged and dropped, and this one I've now inputted via Word. Log in, because it's not been published yet, because it needs to be checked by the editors, as it were. Add test. There we go. So there's the one that we just put in. It says it, we said it was finished, so it's under review. Okay, and, and we've got the document there, and we can again view that, and we've got everything that we've just put in. But I don't like this word utilizing, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to change it to an even worse word, leveraging. Okay, and I'll save that, because you have to in Word to do anything. And then I'll press this update button. Here we go. No, it's the same publication. You just updated it because it's it's refresh. Oh, no, don't reset the virtual machine. Refresh. Change the title. Right, updated the document. Change the title. There's a version in there. It's all history. Right, straight from Word. So it's interactive now. You can hold you can hold the process of publishing open, and that's what one of the key features of Sword Two is. Is we can build objects. We can deposit different things. We can build this thing before we press the publish button. You don't have to come with a SIP. No one gives a SIP. Um, so <laughs> you can build it up in the repository interactively and let's go through this whole process and hopefully in the future, and this is where DepositMO has been focusing, is building this communication between the repository and the user, telling the user where their content's gone, telling the user on every platform where their content's gone so that they can access it, add to it, adjust it, edit it, find out download stats, build this conversation between your content on the web and your content as it is in whatever system you're using to produce it. Okay, so that's kind of the, the deposit MO demo, and, and that's the pretty demo. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? I think what we've just done, actually. <laughs> I think you deserve a trap cake. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to reiterate the, the, the 3D stuff. A lot of that came out of Dev 8D and Dev CSI. That sort of stuff doesn't happen in data centers. It doesn't happen mostly in research environments. It happens by getting a bunch of geeks together and letting them play. And it's important. We need to do that because that's actually what <coughs> the fringe stuff is all about. And that's what repository fringe is about. Go on. No, I was so, so can you... So how do you see that becoming, in, you know, presumably you know, it's more than just a, a whizzy demo, let's have some game system, you know, sort of connected up to a repository, do the thumb kit, but, you know, sort of, you know, sort of the something that you're seeing, which we might be able to see as sort of normal practice, so, you know, sort of, what do we, what's the message that you want us to take away? Flying the aerodrome. Anyway, uh, so this was at Dev 8D, actually flying, flying it like this. Stretch around like, like Superman and actually fly the thing. So that's using this exactly the same technology, except I'm not depositing, I'm actually flying. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer Ian's question, which was, why does this happen? Well, I bought the AR drone to Dev 8D. Ben Osteen bought a Connect, and we looked at each other and went, that was it. That was the only conversation. That was the only bit we needed. To answer Les's question, um, in terms of in terms of what, what Deposit MO has been focused on, it, 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 it's focused on what are the, the technologies and the interfaces. And, and the things that are out there that encourage people to do things. It's like the familiarity with YouTube, the familiarity with Flickr, the familiarity with MediaWiki, very good earlier about this. It is this familiarity. You're not going to make people use something if you have to train them how to use it. Right? Okay? And a, a six year old can use this, right, to drag things about and throw things all over the place, and they'll love it. Right? And, 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 and I'm not saying academics are six year olds, by the way. Um, anyway, but the, 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 the point is it's about the familiarity. You don't have to use you know, a, a connect to do this. You could use it to interact with the objects. You could use it to do... You don't have to use it to deposit it, but it's about... We need to think very carefully about how we're going to get all this data, how we're going to get all these things into the repository. And the key to that is making it so intuitive, so easy to do this, that, that, that everyone just wants to do it instantly, basically. Everyone just thinks, oh, well, there's no trouble doing that. It fits in with my daily workflow. It doesn't take for two minutes. And that's been the kind of the point of building these tools in and uh, facilities in to those sort of products like Office Suite. Peter. Uh, so just to add to the history, um, uh, this came out logically of a GIS project um, uh, which we did called Amy, which was looking at virtual uh, VRERIs and uh, intelligent fume cards. And we bought the Kinect. Um, uh, the university wouldn't let us buy the Kinect because it was too much fun. It was trivial. <laughs> uh, and I think that's an important message. We've got to get over that. We've got to get over that.
got to play with these things, but we had a hack fest in January, and uh, Ben and others put this so they could twiddle molecules around, and, um, uh, and that's, I think, the logical predecessor of the drug. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and interacting with more complex objects like chemical structures that are actually in 3D in real life, but why do we look at them on a screen in 2D? Right? Uh, you know, if we get 3D screens becoming the norm, then you need to interact with it in 3D, not with a mouse on a 2D surface, because it doesn't work. So everyone should have a connector on top of their monitor to be able to rotate things. Right? <laughs> Research money if you start showing clever videos. Um, yeah, we got some. We got some uh, su supplying of some equipment to do some third-year projects on at Southampton, as a result of flying flying the ER drone around the lab. Essentially, an undergrad did that. They, they they took it and decided to fly around the undergraduate lab back in Southampton. Uh, so you, you a, a there is benefit. A, a Bring your data is another very good idea for a developer challenge. People bring data and then we mash it. 